So good, good evening, everybody out there in uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter land. Welcome to another uh, evening with us at Free to Heal. I'm Noreen McClendon, and we are absolutely excited to have you guys here um, tonight. We are going to be discussing something that was we wanted to discuss last week but didn't get an opportunity to. And that is the difference between feeling disrespected and actually being disrespected. So I'm going to start by saying that uh, for people who have been incarcerated, it is a very clear thing that being disrespected, the, the, the bar for what that is, is pretty low. Something as simple as raising your voice to someone in prison can be considered disrespect more often than not is considered disrespect. And it's funny to me in an odd way because having never been to prison, but I knew too many people that had been to prison and the people that have been to prison a lot, they always talk real low. You know, they, they keep a steady voice. And they, it is like, and I never knew why that was until I started doing groups with people and understood that literally that can be considered disrespectful. So what I want to start by doing is I want to tell you, because I'm a big believer in definitions, okay, so that we all speak in the same language. It's not what you think a feeling is, not what somebody else think a feeling. We're going to have the same definition for what a feeling is. And these are the things, so it says an emotional state or reaction. Um, the undifferentiated background of one's awareness considered apart from any in identifiable blah, 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 blah. Um, and this was the one that I think really is the most accurate for what we're talking about. Often unreasoned opinion or belief. So a feeling usually is not necessarily reasoned, reasoned out, but it's an opinion or a belief. So when you put that in the context of, I feel like I'm being disrespected, um, are you really? It, to, to me, it says we need to ask the next question to ourselves. When we get that feeling like we're being disrespected, am I really being disrespected? Okay, let's ask the question because there is a difference. So wait a minute, say that again. I, I I never knew it was a difference because I'm always feeling like somebody disrespecting me and I'm always buck, bucking up. I, I mean, I have to the young woman hurt because I'm always feeling like somebody coming. Okay. And, and Tony, slide over so they can see you, baby. So when when, when you speak, they, there you go. Yeah, that's perfect. So, so what I was saying to Roberta is, is times text me to ask me about something in its context and, and so for me it sometimes is her perception Six. but it could also still be a combination of the both but I try to reason out with her what actually happened and how she feels about what's happened and sometimes it's just her defensive nature and then sometimes she's accurate, but she has to learn the boundaries of both of those. And that's how we even got to this topic of her feeling disrespected versus being disrespected, because there is a very big difference at times. And sometimes there's a little difference. And sometimes there's no difference at all. And, and I think one of the things that I love that you said is that sometimes it's a little bit of both. Sometimes there's a little disrespect going on, but but it's not as big as we think it is. Latanya, I see your hand. Um, I understand that. I I, I, I I get where Antoinette and Roberta's coming from. And, and, and sometimes it all depends on the person. So right now I'm having an issue um, and I felt disrespected a few, a few days ago. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know how, if you haven't came from where we came from, um, a lot of people don't know how to talk to us, you know, and they tend to talk down to us and it puts us in a, a state of mind to where, like, are you talking down to me? 
And it's just because where we came from, you know, um, I feel I'm like. I want to stop you know, right there and ask you this, though. Let me stop right there and ask you this question. Mm -hmm. When you say that, when you say it's just because of where we came from, what do you mean specifically? So we come from incarceration. You know, me, I come from incarceration, um, you know, DCFS, where they talk down to us, well, down to us. I'm saying us, it's a majority of us. But anyway, but yeah, they talk down to us. They don't know how to talk to us. You know, you have to handle us with care. Mm -hmm. And and so so my thing is, a lot of times, um, I, I, I'm wondering, and this is, I'm thinking out loud, and I'm not making any accusation, but I'm wondering if if it is actually going on or if it is, it feels that way because in some instances it happens. And, Correct. And, the reason, and the reason I'm raising the question is I just had a whole uh, two day conversation in, in part with the guy, the Reverend that I met and, and we were talking about lit almost the same thing pretty much like, um, because we believe one thing, we uh, I, I, let me put it to you this way. I'll give you it this way. If I believe that people are going to talk down to me, I automatically believe that. What will happen is people will say something and I automatically interpret it through that lens. I automatically see it through that same lens where it may not realistically be that, but there I'm interpreting it. And because I believe that people, are, I expect people to talk down to me, everything that comes at me that is not exactly the way I want to hear it, I do that. And then it perpetuates itself because now I'm thinking I'm expecting people to be talking down to me. So I'm, you know, I, I'm, I want us, that's why I'm really glad that this topic is now so that we can really have an open conversation about what it is and we can all get tools to deal with when we think it is and then to be able to decipher between the two. We got to be mm -hmm. able to cut between the two and, and cut to the chase of what is actually happening versus what, what we're accustomed to or what we expect to happen. Because sometimes we expect something and then anything that almost remotely looks like that, we label it that. And so I'm real careful, you know, it's um in the four agreements, not making assumptions. So that has saved me as well as the other one that saved my life, which was not taking things personal. Uh, those two saved my life because what it causes me to do is if I hear something good or bad that may lend itself to what I want to see or what I don't want to see, um, I don't automatically now make the assumption or the leap in my favor to make it line up with what I think it should be. So even if it's in a positive way, I had a man to say something to me the other day and behave in a particular way that would have been just nice. It would have been perfect for what I wanted to do to him, right? That would have been wonderful. But that ain't what he said. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not assuming that he meant what I, what he what I could have interpreted that he said. I'm not putting nothing on it. I'm gonna leave it right where he put it. You see what I'm saying? If he want to go further than that, he gonna have to get with the, he gonna have to come straight at it. You see what I'm saying? Because that would have been something I would have loved to have. Yes, yes, yes. Sop him up like a biscuit, y'all. It'd have been nothing. It'd have been on a crack. Okay, but guess what? That ain't what he said. OK, so it, that's a, that, to me, that would have been a positive thing. But even if it's on a negative thing, if, if somebody says something that could maybe be disrespectful or whatever, I'm not going to automatically assume or attribute disrespect to that. That keeps me. That's one of the things that keeps me from being mad all the time. Uh, you know, people making assumptions. I see we are joined by the fabulous Diane. <laughs> Yay! All right, people, I'm in the car driving. Hey, Stinker. Oh. Hey, hey, 
Oh, but you, 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 James over here, he he hollering at you. Look, but you better get him because he gonna be sleeping in about five minutes. We already, the Miss Tony, I miss you. You feeling better? No. Oh wow! But guess Did what though? But guess what though? She cooked today. Really? That's how y'all gonna really do it? That's how you see Miss. That's how you really did it? For real? Mm -hmm. uh, I love you anyway. What you cook? What you, what you cook though? Chicken you, and macaroni and cheese and dressing uh, and some other stuff I heard about. But you know, uh, what y'all can eat that? Yup. Yeah. You sit on the oh. table. You sit on the table back there. Mm. Oh, oh, All y'all who didn't come. Mm -hmm. Is that why Cheryl sit back there gardening? Nah, 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 nah. Oh, I'm really mad. Damn, now I'm really mad. <laughs> they be adding the extras on y'all. Y'all gotta watch out. Y'all gotta watch out for y'all. Give a fuck, man. Okay. <laughs> but thank you. So anyway, so now. The type into you. Yes. Like I was explaining to Roberta, some sometimes you have to, and and I don't know the the four things that you were talking about for agreements. I don't know what those are. I would like to learn what those are, but for me, I stop and take assessment of who my audience is. Ah. Uh. So for for Roberta, feeling disrespected by someone who is. She feels talking down her. That's why I said sometimes it's your your it is the assumption. Sometimes it's, it's your but it all has to do with who the audience is. Who is the person that's talking to you? That is your audience. And what relationship do you have with that person? And what I explained to her is, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm very intelligent. And but I also come from the ghetto, but I, I'm able to to have those board meeting conversations and I'm able to go have a conversation with the Crips and, and, and tell them some things and be able to speak to both people. I don't give a shit what degree degrees you have. Mm -hmm. I have had terse conversations with judges and, and let the judge know my record is probably cleaner than yours. So you better step back a moment. Uh, because I have a very clean record, never been to prison, never been to jail, none of those things. So I don't care when you begin to talk down to people because for the judge, his audience is the defendant and they feel that they can come and they can do these things to you. Well, when Roberta was having a conversation with someone who has a degree who says things like, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry that you have to clock in to work or I'm sorry you have to do these things as a a minuscule person or however putting that things that's when I say there are degrees to it sometimes you are being disrespected sometimes you're not being disrespected and sometimes there's a combination of both it, it, it's for me it's always based on who your audience is and based on you understanding who your audience is when I put it to her that way to understand the person that she's talking to then it helps her to figure out how she's going to begin to diffuse that situation so that she can move forward because none of us is above reproach. No one person is better than the next person. I can have conversations with the CEO the same way I can have conversations with the janitor because either of those persons, either of those roles could be switched. And I know if I had finished college, then I would have some of those same degrees as those other people. So I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you have. You are no better than me. But I know that that is not something that everybody can walk around and carry around with them for whatever their reason is. And I try to help her and anybody else listening how to get to that point because we're all here for a reason. And we all matter. If you didn't, you know, matter, then you wouldn't be able to get up in the morning and go do the things that you are going to do or things that you have done. We're all here for a particular reason, but you have to learn that you have to know who your audience is. And that knowing that audience also and how you feel about that particular audience, how you feel about the audience, because sometimes if you automatically feel like they're above you, then everything they say it's then is going to feel offensive and feel like they're because you inherently at the at the end of the day you feel like they're above you 
And and once we get beyond that, but there and then there are some people. I'm I'm reminded, Miss Ward, um, about a, a situation you said you were on a panel with something. Uh, there was a panel discussion or something, and they asked a question uh, to somebody, and and the people had to say they. The lady was, they were asking the lady a question or something, and it was kind of set up for them to ask her the question. And she, yeah. right, and she didn't, she was the last one to know. And, and she d responded exactly like it was expected that she was going to respond because she, yes, 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 yes. She thought she did well when she spoke, but the what she said actually made the other people know that she wasn't with our side. Right, yeah. And, and, and I was going to say, I don't, I, uh, Roberta's telling me to this, but when Tony was talking, our experience, what we've experienced makes a lot of difference in I'm what the degree her. people have going for them. Mm -hmm. Because we've been in situations they'll never be in in their lives. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was university there. of experience. Uh -huh. So, yeah. yeah. So what I what I've been through, it's like I I feel that coming out of incarceration, we are survivors, we are warriors, and it's just like when COVID first came and the and and it shut the entire world down. The first day, the people were on social media talking about, I can't do this. The second day, they were saying, my kids need to go back to school. I can't do this. I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the house. And I told them girls that was in the house. We got it made because we used to being locked up in a cell. Right, right. So COVID you ain't cannot teach that. In class. Yeah, you can't teach that. And there, and there's so much of this. One of the things I'll say too is that um, my mother always told us, "You ain't no better and no worse than nobody else. Yeah. Never let nobody make you feel that you less than." She also told me that when you walk past the dudes on the corner in front of the liquor store, you speak to them. Yeah. Why? Because if something goes down, they're going to be the people to save your life. Okay. They're going to be the people that look out for you. So again, the difference between feeling something and actually being disrespected. What is that? Um, disrespect is to show or express disrespect or dislike. Now, you know, that is, you're not supposed to use the word in a, def in a definition. So Miriam Webster was messed up on that one. I'm going to take him to task. But disrespect, a lack of respect, a discourtesy, okay? So these, so that lack of respect, and that's why it feels so bad to you because it's a lack of, a lack of respect. It's a lack of courtesy, um, even for- um, uh, Always protect me. And, and, I, and so it also goes back to how you gonna display your anger because uh, I shouldn't be getting angry. I should just know how to come back in, in, in Why? a way, huh? Why? Know. Because when I come, I'm, I'm like, but is that not teaching? Is that not teaching like more? that? Right. So it's in my head. Who's she talking to? And then I automatically just, brrr, and she like, uh, learn how to use your words. You know what? What? I'm using my words. This is how I'm you using. I'm just, to treat this is what I'm doing right now. Right. Right. But so then I'm learn how to. Back her all the way up into her own office. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm in but see, my I'm thing is, to, I don't. Did that or not well, right. you but see, that it again, it starts with your audience. Your audience right. is being disrespectful. The lack of respect. Your audience feels, oh, I have a degree, I can disrespect you. Right. And that is not the case. No, maybe your your reaction was not appropriate, but and you can always work on that. But at this end of the day, if I have a bad reaction and I feel like, oh, let me, let me, because I've had to do that with colleagues. Oh, you know what? I chewed your ass and spit you out, but let me back up and have a professional conversation with you and let you know how you presented it to me because I was on a call with 500 professionals across AT&T talking about um, the, the um, when Oscar Grant's trial was brought to Los Angeles and they wanted to know, what the what the what the the uh, atmosphere was like in our communities, and so this is a trial. My boss was in Northern California. My peers were in Northern California. This was a trial that came from their city and brought down to my city. And my boss said to me, "Oh, everything will be okay." And I told her, "Back up a minute, because you of all places in California, 
you bring a trial of that magnitude down to where we already had to deal with Reginald Denny and the Rodney King riots. You don't understand. I left work that morning and everything was fine. By the time I got off work, the gas station on the corner of my house was on fire. My daughter was paranoid and sitting in the house crying. My grandmother was paranoid. My whole neighborhood was on fire. And I explained to them, you know nothing about what I live with and how I deal with things. And you have to be able to, you have to be able to have that conversation, but it takes time and it takes work. And I said to them, one of my peers, all the way out of San Ramon, down the street from where it happened to Oscar Grant, she said, well, those people, and it's 500 professionals, and I nutted the fuck up. I said, excuse me? Yeah. And she said, uh, 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 uh. I said, excuse me, did you say those people, and my boss is on, on, the, on the computer Dinging me. I can hear the ding because she's instant messaging me asking me to calm down. And I'm telling her, you stand your ass back because both of y'all are white and both of y'all live in the suburbs. And what happened down there, that trial should have stayed down there so that you can understand what I have had to deal with. Mm -hmm. But now you come on here and all of these professionals and you have the audacity to say those people. Those people. Those people are me. And I'm concerned when I leave here, whether or not the rest of my city is going to be on fire 20 years later. You don't understand. You know what I'm saying? So your uh, your you can say to yourself that your reaction was inappropriate, but you have a professional responsibility to go back and say, "Hey, my reaction to what you said to me was very inappropriate because you atoned for your mistakes." But let me come back and let me explain to you what you did that put me in that place and how are we going to move forward. See, I don't have any problems with telling somebody because I don't have that fear. You have to learn how to get past that fear and not let somebody disrespect you. It is your, your reaction to that disrespect that you have to work on. But the disrespect still happens. And, and, and let me say this too. I, um, the reaction that you had, Tony, was the result of an actual cause. Absolutely. Something caused that. Exactly. It was real. Thing. And when I left the Wilshire district, everything was hunky dory. They was, you know, they was it was five o'clock. They was at happy hour doing their thing. When I hit Lebray in Washington, which I could have been on a good day, maybe walk that distance, my whole neighborhood was on fire, and it was a gas station. And all I could think was, it's gonna blow up the entire block, the neighborhood, everything. And I get home from that. I I pass that and get home, and my daughter is in actual tears, sitting in my grandmother's lap. That was trauma, it was trauma for all of us at that particular time. And so for you 20 years later to this, this, the whole situation, and for my boss to make me try to make me feel like you out of line for I'm being not, offended. I'm not out of line for being offended for feeling the way that I was. No, I wasn't out of line. And I had a right to tell her and everybody else because after that, her boss, who was in New Jersey, wanted to be relatable. And she's like, can you call me after the call? Sure can. But I'm still going to make my peace with it because you, I take nothing away from you and you're not going to take anything away from me. And in, your, and in your situation, Roberta, the reality is, is if she's being condescending and all and and discourteous and those things, you have a right to defend yourself. Now, some I I don't like it when somebody does something and then they say, "Well, you didn't have to act like that. You didn't have to respond like that. Don't right. tell me how to respond right. to how you mistreated me right. and was wrong to me. You don't get to decide after you did what you did how I respond. You don't get to decide that. That I get to decide that." OK, and whether it was appropriate or not is for you to decide because you were the one who was offended. Right. You were the one who the offense was committed against. Exactly. Right now, of course, and, and I saw your hand, sure, of course, when we when we talk about our response and our reactions, we got to think about the consequences of that moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And sometimes it can have negative consequences when we don't respond what people might because particularly in a professional or work environment right but thankfully you work in an environment where people understand but chief it's okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something else about that uh-huh say it go ahead because so, i'm gonna say because then you go and you say hey okay maybe i came off a little bit too harsh or whatever you know now you're trying to soften the yeah. up like but then 
Then she, you 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 get um. Well, I'm sorry, you felt that way. Oh yeah, see that's gaslighting. What that is is that's minimizing. No, it's not that I felt that way. It's not that I felt that way. It's what you actually did. You actually, it is. It's pouring salt in the wound, and and it's period. That's it. And exactly, and that's what the issue is. Is that she was he or she was not accepting responsibility for their behavior, and that's what people do, and that becomes and that makes it worse. It's like I like even when I hear people say, um, for example, that we should get over slavery. I could get over slavery if y'all stop oppressing me. I could get over slavery if every time I get ready to go somewhere or, or, or whatever, whatever the situation is, the circumstances that apply to other people don't apply to me. The rights that they have don't, I don't have those rights. Okay. If you, if you stop oppressing me, if you stop automatically assuming every time you see me that I'm an angry black woman and treating me like that all the time, I might be able to get over slavery. Like I'm less, less than that. I'm not exactly. If you, to again bring up a personal thing, but buying my house, I put down X amount of thousand dollars on this house, and I had this white woman call me to say, I have six months of your bank statements, and I can't account for $150. And it was my first time buying a house, and she had me so confused. And when I realized that she was basically making a mockery of my loan to keep from giving me the loan, I had some serious choice words, but I had to get the broker on the phone who was a black woman. And the broker commenced to cuss this woman out so badly that I went from thinking I had done something wrong to ready to go whoop her natural white ass for trying to do this. But she had done this to three other sets of people. And the broker just happened to know about it. Me, I've been sitting there trying to figure out, well, what do I do now? Oh my and, God. And, like, and $150? Like, you could have gave you could have you could have turned in recyclables at the recycling you center for 150. Don't know exactly, exactly. Like I said, it's a personal experience of what happens if you quit treating me like I'm less than. If you quit trying to me down, then I could get over slavery. But every time I turn around, the the conversation we had earlier today about not being able to go get your your personal business done, or you got to get up and drive a mile and take a camel up a road to get to do some things that you need to do for your body. You can't get it done in your own neighborhood. That is still a form of oppression. If you quit oppressing me, I can do these things. I don't want to go to, I want, I don't want to go to Torrance to go to Total Wine Experience. I really would like to go in Inglewood. I might want to go to Watts where I work at, but I can't get no, no Chuck E. Cheese. My kids can't go to Chuck E. Cheese in Los Angeles, you know, uh, I'll give you another, I mean, I hate to be on a rant, but a place that I used to love to go eat, um, the, uh, the burger place. There are none of them in the city of Los Angeles. And I, and I have called corporate to ask questions. Why are, I know all these people who would get up and drive to go get these burgers and eat this food, but you can't Fud cook Ruggers. one. No, not Fud Ruggers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the car hop place. Oh, um, uh, it's like in Johnny Rocky. Uh, uh, it's kind of like that, but but these these are these are places of oppression. Right, there are things instances of oppression. Exactly, a hundred different instances of oppression based on just being black. And and where and where it doesn't the 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 unequal treatment hasn't changed. Right. So you want me to you want me to just get over it and act right. like it's not existing? More. Went right, but it's just changed into something different. Right. They took off the robes and put on suits and got on the school boards and stuff like that. So don't act like and, and passing laws and we got the Supreme Court. They done rigged the Supreme Court and all this and all these different things that they're doing simultaneously and acting like we're somehow being uh, being um, unreasonable in, in being upset about it. OK, again, or, or it's straight gaslighting. Or how about the another example for people who couldn't get all of that? And y'all don't understand that, right? You can understand this. I'm a man, I've been cheating. I get busted cheating on my woman. She now knows that I've been cheating with this other woman for two or three years. And, and you tell me 
You tell me you've been cheating on me for two or three years. And now you tell me I should just get over it. And you got the heifer laying in the other room. The cheating still going on in my face, but all of a sudden I'm supposed to just get over it. Okay. No, 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 no. And no. Okay. No I, means no. No, <laughs> no means no. And the reality is, is that if the behavior doesn't change, then you can't expect me to just get over it. You can't. And you, again, you don't get to decide how I respond to you showing me a lack of respect. You don't that's get how, that choice. That's how it was when I worked at Food for Less. You know, when uh, Obama was president, this white guy would always get in my line and make a snack. I personally put Obama in office. Oh, well, you did. I, I, you. I, I personally put him in office. You, I personally had the black people move to Las Vegas. I personally run up the crime in Las Vegas. I personally had all these bad things happen in Las Vegas. I'm one person. And you waited till you get into my line to tell me about all this? I feel, I'm feeling that you're talking down to me, sir, and I'm feeling very disrespected by you. So I'm going to ask you to stop having these conversations with me because it's your third time. The two times I didn't say nothing because I was like, okay, I know he's not talking to me because you at the end back of your groceries, you talking about Obama's in office. That's about all this stuff is going on, all these people. But I, I let it go. But the third time I couldn't let it go because now I feel like you're personally attacking me and you're personally disrespecting me because I didn't have nobody move to Las Vegas. I moved to Las Vegas by myself. When I got there, everybody else was already there. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and, and you didn't move and you didn't move Obama into the White House, neither did you. No. No, I did not. You didn't do I that. Tried to drive the truck. You, you you tried tried to drive drive the truck. <laughs> Put the motor black man to the white house. But they didn't let you. No, because I. Was oh wow. Black. They knew I was gonna paint it black, and a little color to it, and we're gonna put some. Put some weed in the garden. Oh my goodness! You gonna grow oh, some weed in the garden? Got the garden with the. I think that would have been a federal offense. Oh, um, okay. yes. They, they, they spoke. They, they they smoke more and produce more liquor in, in prohibition. I'm telling you. I'm so telling you. I, I, but to, <laughs> to speak a little bit on. on what what Roberta her situation, not to drag it out, but when I wrote this as a thought of a day, it was to make people understand that they're valid. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what your education is, mm -hmm. right. what your color is, what your what your um your religious background is, or what experience you have experienced in your life. Mm -hmm. Self esteem has been a big issue for the black community. Mm -hmm. And when I wrote that thought of the day, I was going through a situation where someone tested me in a way that they didn't know that I had a, a college degree. They thought I was a dumb guy just getting out of prison after 26 and a half years and didn't know nothing. And when I sat up there and I gave them my resume, <coughs> I didn't say too many words because I don't speak a lot when I go on interview. I like for them to ask questions and I answer them very precise and that's it to the point. And when I gave the guy my resume, he thought I was lying. And mm. then when I brought out my portfolio and handed it to him with all the credentials in it, you know, he actually called the fiber, fiber optics board to find out if that number was legit. Do you know he called Blythe? to find out if I actually attended college and got a social history. And he tried to find out if I was enrolled at Ohio State University pursuing my bachelor's degree. When he found out all that was accurate, the other white dude that was in there came in and told him, now don't you feel like a bigger fool? <laughs> the man didn't have to get verbal with you. He had to combat you word for word because this man knew his worth. That's why I wrote that that day. It's because you have to know your 
your worth. You have to know that you're valid. Our experience is something that a lot of people, have the people that found out that we experienced what we experienced going through prison, say, how can you, how can you go through that and come out the way you come out? A lot of people will say, man, you're stronger than average. It's not strength. I turned prison into an education. So what I did was I made myself valid. I attended the groups just like you did. The valid, the, 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 the point of somebody else speaking over me does not exist mm -hmm. because I have a wall. And they have to walk, they have to walk through the door to the wall in order to know who I am. So when they start talking and try to talk over my head, you know how I hit them? I sit them and I say, excuse me, yes. The words that you're speaking of right now, break it down. Mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. I'm a black man. Come and walk on my side of the block. I'm from Compton. Walk on my side of the street. You want me to do something that you need done? Walk on my side of the street. Now, you can't walk on my side of the street, then let's find a commonality. Right. Where we can understand each other. Other than that, we don't have nothing else to say to each other. Point blank, period. Because a person cannot speak to you if you don't speak back. That's a conversation. Right. That's it's, communication. It's like, it's, like, I like, it's like I like to say uh, that negative energy, nobody likes to perform without an audience. Right. So when you want to act a fool and I'm not paying you no mind and I just let you act a fool, then now all of a sudden you, you, you're not interested in acting like that. But I want to open it up to, to the folks on Zoom for comments. I want to, what, 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 what y'all think? Go ahead, Mr. Steffens. Oh. Go ahead. And, and, and there you go. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Lorraine, I like the fact that a matter of what we're talking about tonight, especially when you talked about uh, disrespect and how do you know that you disrespect or being disrespected and how do you feel? You know, uh, Mr. James brought up something that was very interesting when he talked about where you come from, you know, what side of the field that you're on, what side of the fence that you live on. You know, uh, for years and years and years of my life, coming from a segregated state, disrespect was a thing that happened every day. Every day. But there was action. It wasn't stimulus, but it was the cause of why so many people out of the South came to the West and became dangerous people. They was dangerous to themselves and they was dangerous to others. You know, for so long, I didn't understand why I felt the way that I felt coming from the segregated South. But after all these years, doing 30 years in prison and getting out, and saying, wow, you know, what's wrong with me? And so I had to stop and think all the time inside taking program to try to learn who I was, try to learn what my true feelings were. And then when I got an inkling, I, little bit of who I thought I was, I wasn't that person either. So it took a lot of growth and it took a lot of understanding and it took a lot of will. You know, two months, I'll be 70 years old, and I'm still here. I think God has a way of laughing because he gives us old age, and that's something incredible, you know? And yes. so I said, well, now here I am. You know, I'm here. What am I going to do? I'm all new. You know, last week I said, you know, I praise God for his mercy for making me over, you know, and that was a true sentiment that I said is because I'm a brand new person. I'm a brand new person in Christ. So, you know, when you talk about disrespect and when you talk about how do you know that you're being disrespect and how do you feel about being disrespected, you know, it's a deep rooted cause that's bedded inside of you that sometimes pain is just what it is. It's just pain. So you have to learn how to deal with that pain and you have to learn how to confront that pain and you have to learn how to use that pain where it'd be working for the good of you and not the bad. Thank you. For the better. I always, always, always love his comments, um, Mr. Steffens. I could listen to him talk all day. 
um, literally, because there's always something positive and uplifting in what you say. And um, I'm glad that you went to all the groups that you went to to help you have that have that perspective. And I think one of the things um, that you and James both touched on is uh, knowing our worth and asking that question. That was the, the question of what's wrong with me? Um, oftentimes we are, bad things happen to good people, okay? That's just a fact of life. But if, if it happens as very young children, oftentimes what people begin to say is, children begin to say, it's me. Why does everybody hate me? What's wrong with me? Well, the reality is, is there's nothing wrong with you. The people who did bad things to you as a child, it was something wrong with them. And it wasn't you. And so once we begin, and how do we get beyond that? We need to understand that we have within us and we are intelligence, wisdom and knowledge, love, beauty, justice. We got foundation, we got power, we got strength. These are the things that are actually in us. They always were, but it's the same thing as if you broke and you need a loaf of bread and that $5 is in your jeans in a dirty clothes hamper it's not doing you no good until you wash the jeans and the money fall out the pocket and you find it in the bottom of the washing machine. The $5 was there. You had $5 when you thought you was broke. You thought you were broke. But the reality is you had $5. You just didn't know where it was and you didn't know how to access it at the time. So the reality is, is once we begin to understand what's really in us and who we are and that there's nothing wrong with us, there's absolutely nothing wrong with us. Then we feel that worth and nobody can make me feel anything. That's another thing. You can't make me feel bad about me. You're not going to do that. Why? Because my esteem, I know who I am. I know how I get down every day. I got a family member right now. If you talk to that family member, they're going to tell you, what am I die? I'm nothing but a glorified clerk. Yes. <laughs> I had to say that because I know that cracks her up every time you say it. I'm a glorified clerk. I'm easy <laughs> myself. My family yes. member will tell you, Ooh, you talk yes, to that you person, are. especially today, die, because today mm. we today die. I know. I was waiting. Okay. If you talk to them today, they will tell you that I am the epitome of evil. Mm -hmm. I am horrible. I'm all of these things. And none of that's true. Not at all. That's how they feel about themselves. But they're going to put that off on me. But if I absorb what they say, then I can begin to believe that. And then that opens up the door that anytime somebody says something about me, I believe that. So now I take that on and I'm taking on more and more and more untruth. And it makes me feel less and less about myself. So I have learned, again, not taking none of that stuff personal because it's not about me. If you praising me, that's about how you feel about you. If you talking crap about me, that's how you feel about you. That is not my job to understand or clarify or be able to figure all that out. What I do know is when I know you're being offensive to me, let's just change the word from being disrespected to being offensive, right? And when I know you're offending me, then I have a right to say so. In fact, it's my obligation to tell you that you're being offensive. Why? So you don't think you can do it again. See, because mm -hmm. like you said, Di, you didn't say nothing the first two times and homie felt like he just come back yeah. and every time he getting his groceries, he gonna get in your line and make you responsible for the fact that Obama's in office and it's crime. It's been crime in America since America got started. Thank America you. started with a damn crime. It sure don't did. Playing. Don't, don't play with me. Yeah, I'm like, really? You know what I'm saying? Y'all was stealing. Oh. That's how it got started in the first place. So don't act like uh, stealing and crime is a problem. Some of our founding families, the Kennedys was bootleggers. M miss me. Yes, yes. That's right? So look, so guess what? So I, so again, it, are we offended? Is Am I really, is, is it meant to be offensive? 
Okay. And are you actually offending me? I want to open up anybody else because it's already after seven. And, and what I recognize is I got some good information from the lady that called me from the council office. The Laker game won't be on. And what I know is I don't even, I'm not even trying to compete with the Laker game. Okay. I can't compete. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't even in my wheelhouse. Nor even try it. But I want to give, I want to give all y'all here. The opportunity to have y'all say so and have your input into this conversation. I know I talked a lot tonight, but LeBron ain't gonna let me be me late. <laughs> okay, what time the game actually start? What time the game start, Miss Laker Lady? Look at her. She, she crazy. She crazy. Okay, okay. I only got it's seven oh six. I got I gotta let y'all go so y'all get set up for the game. Okay. So look. Okay. How about this, Miss Latanya? Oh, did you want to say something, Miss Cheryl? Huh? No. Long time ago. You forgot, but now I'm sorry. <laughs> you'll, say, you'll say it on your checkout, okay? Go ahead, Miss Latanya. Go ahead and check out for me, love. Um, good topic. Thank you. Thank you. You, you got Miss Roberta to thank for that. Yeah. This was for her. Thank <laughs> you, Roberta. This was for her. Mr. Kittredge, can you unmute? Go on and work on that while you're working on that. Mr. Hall, go on and ho holler at me. Oh, yeah, very good topic. Like she said, uh, you should have it again next week because this week, like you said, you ain't going to be able to compete with the Lakers. No, I can't. We'll run this one back next week, baby. We'll run it back next week, okay? We'll run it back. Yeah, Boy, uh, uh, we'll run it back. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Mr. Uh, Bradley. Uh, yeah, I say uh, it was a good topic. I would like to come back to it next week so uh, I can respond to some of the things too. Thank okay, you. but take your notes though. No, but but you got to make some notes, okay? Make oh, some no. notes. Nice I, so I you go, know what you want to respond to. I'm going to, on okay? with y'all. I'm going on with y'all. Yeah. With y'all sharing, and I agree with a lot of it too. Wait, y'all um, talking about? I can't hear Mr. Bradley. I say said, it again. I, I agree with a lot of what y'all shared and stuff. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and I like to just speak on myself too. Oh, awesome, sure. wonderful. Thank Mr. You. Terry. Hi, Noreen. Yes, uh, you have a very good topic there. Being disrespectful or talking down to somebody is really bad. You shouldn't do it, and you should respect other people that you respect uh, yourself. And that's what I live by. That's awesome. I love that. Mr. Jones. Hey, I, I apologize to everybody for being late, but... Um... I'm I'm just happy that y'all gonna pick up on this that we we are gonna pick up on this conversation next week and and I'm looking forward to it. Awesome sauce, Miss Williams. Okay, well I'm sorry for being late. I had to go to the school for a little meeting, but I enjoyed the uh, the conversation that I did uh, come in on. And thank you, Miss Roberta. And thank you, Mr. James. Okay, Mr. Stephens, last comments. Yeah, this is such groovy stuff. And I'm like everyone else. Next week, we uh, I took some notes and and then we'll talk a little in depth about that. And well, so I'll just about you say groovy. This is okay. <laughs> 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 yes. I thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Tillman, you wanna you wanna check out on any any last comments, sweetie? Can you hear me, Terrell? Any last comments from you, love? You got to unmute, I think, babe. Yeah, so basically, I just want to tell everybody, and this is what I wanted to say uh, from the beginning, because your perception ain't what it is all the time. Yeah. And you can feel disrespected or like somebody is disrespecting you, and so what? Did you finna go back to prison because somebody disrespected oh, you and wow. hurt your little feelings? Or are you going to suck that shit up and go the other way? That's what it's about. Because even if somebody did disrespect you, to what degree do you feel it's going to have to trigger you off to fuck your life off again? You For know sure. what I'm saying? And, and you so, know what? And, so, and listen. So, and, no, go ahead. And like I said, you got to be able to take that L and turn that L into a W. Because if you trigger off, you're going to lose big time. But walking away... You win. So you got to understand, so what if somebody disrespected me? In my life, it's not, it's, when I walk away or they walk away, that shit is over with. 
But guess what? I'm here. I ain't in handcuffs because I done acted a fool and I'm kicking myself in the ass and the consequences and the principles of all of that stuff wasn't even worth it. Now I'm sitting back in jail, new case, and, and something I could have walked away from. Now I lose and everybody lose. And everybody that did want to see me downfall, they prove you proved them right as opposed to proving yourself right, saying I could change, I could do something different. So what if somebody disrespect you from a level? You've been disrespected before in your life. And got over whether it. Whether it was in prison or on the street. And there's a lot of people that need to understand now. that, Terrell. There's a lot of people yeah. don't get that. There's a yeah, lot of people that I mean, don't get it. It's just like this, you know. Yeah, and, and it people is. People say, oh, you know, it, it, that's just what it is. You know, you ain't going to ever have everything your way. But you have to learn and grow. It comes with maturity. It comes with knowledge. It comes with wisdom. Because you could be a knowledgeable fool. But if you don't act on it, you a damn fool. Yeah. Wisdom comes from your actions and the things that you do in a positive light. Those are the good choices that you make. You know what I mean? So you can be a knowledgeable person, but if you don't make the right, the right, the choices that are right that you make, that's what make you wise. Awesome. Because the wise old owl is still around because he's a wise old owl. The dead chicken and the dead duck, they dead as hell. <laughs> Word. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. James, final thoughts? Hey, peace. <laughs> Got you. He said peace. Darlin, last thoughts? No one is above reproach. And uh, we all Chapter every single day. Wonderful. Yep. Ma'am? There's someone who came. Your microphone is muted. Your video stopped. Your microphone is unmuted. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead and check out. What's your final co comments, Kit? Okay. I, I, I'm having a hard time with this muted and unmuted thing. That's what I'm having. But, hey, look. <laughs> Disrespecting, I found out you only disrespect it if you bite into it. How about if that? you don't. If you don't bite into it and you keep a calm head, they don't want to look like the fool. Got you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Missy. I heard there's somebody at the Franciscan homes that came home after 40 some years. So tell him I said, welcome home. And I just want to know, is magic playing in the game tonight? This okay. Right. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> look, 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 look. Hey. She been she been gone a long time, y'all. She looking for magic to be playing. She that means she been gone a long time. No, ma'am, but Mr. Magic won't be playing tonight. I'm sorry. No, it's King no, James. It's King James. James. No, no, he's not injured. He's retired. Yeah, he don't play no night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any last any last thoughts for you, my love? Um, so I look forward to next week. Um, uh, as far as you go, Tyrell. Uh, Tyrell. Uh huh. Um, I, I don't. I'm not at that point to where I, I've grown from um, uh, taking off on somebody because I feel disrespectful. So I'm not. I'm not going to jail for being. Yeah. Uh, for feeling yeah. that way. Yeah. Like, well, it's but good, I'm not but nobody just disrespect me. Right. But right. you know what? This is the thing too. I I want to say, and I and I think one of the things that's important is to recognize is that this conversation is not just for us in in this room or on this Zoom. This is for people who, who whoever will hear this after this as well. So it's important that all of these perspectives, because there are some people who don't know what Terrell said, that because yes, we have been disrespected and survived it. Okay, this ain't the first time you've been disrespected. Okay, and how you respond to that. And if you can't move beyond that with, with and and because again, something that Kit said, it's what you feel how you respond to that they can't you can't okay i'm gonna I'm just tell you this one thing it's 7 15 i'm gonna tell you this because by 7 17 we got to be done okay because y'all got to be able to get to the lakers game and no magic ain't playing one time <laughs> a lady one time a lady called me a fat bald head bitch and she meant that with all the steak on it she had and my thing is this okay <laughs> what you want me to do okay I don't have no hair, so I get at that time I didn't even have all this right here. So okay, bald head, fat, okay, and now what? And now what? That's don't the part. Damn thing. Don't mean no everything. No that way. nigga no you way. calling no me way. behind, he still want me more than he wants you. So what? Uh, did 
did it make? Because you calling me about a nigga. And that and he still wants me more than he wants you with my fat ball head ass. Okay. So there you have it. So look, y'all go enjoy the Laker game. We're gonna come back to this conversation next week. Don't be shaking your head. You need need to stand up for something, though. You need to stand up for something. No, you do. No, you do. Yes, sir. You got to stand up for something as a you just can't let people run over you and just do it. Yes, that's for sure. As you say, it's with your action. Uh-huh. It's your action because, like Michael Max and all, they stood up for people because our black people were being disrespected, and then people came together to stand up for all black people and stuff. And that's what we got to stand up. When you being disrespected as a as a as a people, you got to stand up as a people, or they gonna run over you. They gonna Indeed. hang you, and- put you in trick, or they gonna beat you. So sometimes we got to stand up. That's why we need to finish this next week. You know, yes, okay. indeed. We're, we're gonna come back to it next yeah. week, y'all. Okay. These some LA people. We in LA. We LA based. And for the rest of the country, okay, I hope y'all understand. So that if your team is playing, we will let you out for your team too. Okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 See y'all next Bye. week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> She's still about no magic, y'all. We're gonna pray for We're gonna work you on next her. Week. Bye, y'all. Uh, hey, hey, Burger. I mean, the Olympic <laughs> game and uh, Warrior game coming on right now. Game I one. Mean,